Now, I'm going to be tying a basic well, a parachute caddis, a parachute, uh, parachute uh, sedge pattern. Now, there's many names for this style of fly. This is just a, a very basic one in the style. Again, this is a, a basically answer questions I get on YouTube. So I hope this will answer quite a few. Now, the rusty done. I'm using 8O. Just much the same colour. You can go maybe a tan or a brown on this as well. You can change it to suit. Now what I'm doing is taking the thread halfway down, break off the waist, and then I'm going to come away up to about maybe two thirds of that way back up. And then I'm going to tie in. I'm just going to use a glow bright, let's see, uh, the multi yarn, which is just like a, an antron. And it's white, obviously. And what I do is I come underneath, get a length of it, underneath the hook, catch it in either side, and then come round with a, a posting turn or two just to secure it in, and then trim it. And there we are, that's, that's it basically on, and there's not much bulk when you do it that way. Uh, now I'm going to tie in a furnace cock hackle, there's a saddle, sorry, it's just a, a light furnace I have. It's going to bear some of the stem. Basically, going to catch it on. I want plenty of the stem, uh, the bare stem, to be wound onto the when I'm going to post. Basically, the hackle as you do when you do this. See, this is where you, when you're forming a parachute hackle, you're doing that. You're posting the the hackle and coming up with the thread turns, and coming back down. I just hold the the antron. So I wind down. Now I have waxed the thread so it's given me a lot of grip. So basically you've taken the thread turns up, posting up your hackle, obviously in your wing. And in this style you want it to sit above, if you imagine having a thorax down here, you need to be slightly above that so that it doesn't put it down at an angle or doesn't sort of exaggerate that. So by keeping it slightly higher makes it easier. So anyway, then we come to the back, we do our body. Now, I'm just going to do a basic, basic fly. So I'm just going to get a good, any dry fly type dubbing, anything that's quite light. I'm using a, a basic, like a, a brown, which suits most caddis. It's got a nice brown colour. These are dubbins a friend gave me, they're just standard dubbins, dry fly dubbins, I like using them. What they do is, I mean this is a more a synthetic type dubbin. First thing we'll take my thread down to the bend of the hook. Now with these type of dubbins as I'm going to say, the, you want them to be able to soak up uh, like a, a floatant that helps to float the fly, so this is a very hollow type. Anything like that, a good dry fly dubbing, and there's many out there. And don't be shy with the body, the caddis has got a decent thickness in the body. Now, what I'm doing is taking it up, as you can see, to this point here, trim away the excess dubbing. So, you get a nice, dead, like really nice shape, looks good. Okay. Now, the underwing of the fly is the CDC, so as I say, there's many ways you can actually make the wing of your caddis. If you've got a favourite caddis pattern, you just tie it basically at the back here, and then you've got your parachute wing in front. Now, I've got three feathers, CDC feathers here, which is, the, as I say, the underwing. Now, as you can see, I've left a good mil and a half, two mil there to catch in the CDC. So I've got the tips and the length I want, I want enough to hang over the back. So we come in, two or three turns, I trim this away, the excess, just be careful. Now what I'm going to do is see the, these feathers, I'm going to use the, the remains of these feathers as dubbing. So just keep a hold of them, tidy this area up, make sure there's wax on your thread. Fine, and then I'm going to get some. This is elk hair, just for the same material you're using your elk hair caddis. They don't go, don't, don't, don't put too much on, 
just enough to sit on top because you've got the CDC there. I would say half the amount you would normally use if you were tying an elk gear caddis. So, first thing we do is take away all the fluff from the cut ends, especially because you're going to stack it. So, when you put it into the stacker, it's got a medium sized stacker here, so it tips first in. Tap it on your desk. Should line them up, that's fine. Remove them from the stacker. Now you've got the length, which is just slightly just towards the end of the CDC. Now to save a wee bit of bulk, I'm going to trim this. So I'm going to trim it just a bit there. And yeah, make sure you see these yeah, threads waxed. So we come in here, tie this down. May have missed a couple, I can see a couple floating there, but don't worry about it, just take them away. So basically there, if you look at the, that's the caddis at the back. That's your, your favourite caddis pattern. And then, as we say, we're going to get the, here's the CDC, there's a dubbing for the thorax. So we've got the feathers here, there's three I've used. Makes for a great dubbing. And it goes with the colour of the fly, so what I'm going to do here is line them, lay them top of one another. Like this. And then I'll get enough dubbing out of this. Yeah, I trim it away, give an idea. So come in here. So we basically I trim this away. I'm gonna let it encourage it to sit on my desk. Do the other side. So I've got it laying on my desk. Just gonna gather it up. It's there. Just put it in my finger and thumb. I'm going to offer it to the thread. This is going to be for the, the back of the thorax. Slide this up. Leave the rest on the desk. So tidy the back of the, the way up to make sure it's neat. Take away the excess. Again, set that on your desk for the front. So bring your thread to the front. Again, make sure you've got wax on your thread, you need that grip. And then you just parachute your hackle, or put, wind your parachute hackle on, sorry. So basically, because you took it up, posted it, you're going to work your way down. And I'm happy with that, so there's three or four turns here. The easiest way to do it is to just bring your, your hackle down and wrap it around the thread, but you need to lift your thread up towards the as near to the hook as you can and then basically what I do there is that's wrapping the the hackle and you can just lift the hackle fibres out of the way it's a, it's just wraps a, a, a turn of thread or two round the, the stem of the hackle and it you basically just you lift it out the road and you can see the hackle how it's sitting it, it locks it in, stops it pulling back you just got to be patient when you're doing that. Uh, and then all I'm doing now is wax the thread, come back to a wee bit of dubbing. Just lift everything out of the way at this point. This will tidy the head area up. So we look where we are, that's fine. And then we just... Even winding the thread through the dubbing to tighten it up. Get my varnish. I mean, this is just rough and ready tying. It's not been fussy with the dressing, it's just tying the fly. Wet finish with the varnish on the thread. Tighten up, trim away. Just bring your hackle back down. Nice and tight. There we are. Now, the, if you want to see this, It'll help to see your fly. The colour of your antron can be pink, it could be all different colours, so, but the white's fine. I would trim this probably half, if you take it towards halfway up the wing, if you pull the, uh, the antron towards the back of the yarn, trim it there, and that will give you something to work with. Don't make it too short, if you feel it's too long, you can trim it back when you're on the water. But it's a very simple fly, as you can see, it's, it's easy to tie. Uh, it's 
it's a matter of not been overdoing it with the materials. If you put too much on, you're having issues. Well, that's what will cause the issues anyway. As you can see, the hackle sits nice because it's sitting a wee bit higher. It's sitting in the dressing where it should be out the way. Or the caddis pattern or the parachute caddis. And one certainly I would recommend.